Join veteran broadcaster and host, Ms. Bridget Lewis, right here on Coffee Talk Jazz Radio TV. Something Big is Brewing here at Coffee Talk Jazz Television. I am your host, Ms. Bridget Lewis. I'm also known as the Coffee Lady. On this evening's coffee menu, it's the holiday season and Christmas is just a few days away. We are broadcasting live from the legendary Spaghettini's Grill and Jazz here in Seal Beach, close to the 405, 605, and 22 freeways. This evening, I am so excited to welcome to Coffee Time Jazz Television my very special guest, Mr. Greg Adams. Let me tell you a little bit about Greg. There's so much to share. Greg is a Grammy and Emmy-nominated trumper, trumpeter, arranger, and composer. His sound is one of the world's best-known musical signatures. I'm so glad that he is here. Now, Greg, tonight you're going to be performing here. Yes. At Spagatini's Grill and <coughs> Jazz. Let's talk about your latest project, A Sweet Soul Christmas, and also about your project, um, East Bay Soul 2.0. Tell us what's on the menu tonight here at Spaghetti. Okay, okay. Well, you know, every year we do a little Christmas show just for the folks because of the holiday season. We book some shows around the holiday, and, and uh, I've got a collection of Christmas arrangements I've done over the years. And so we do a Christmas song, Walking in a Winter, winter Wonderland, Silver Bells, This Christmas, the classic by uh, Donny Hathaway. And um, uh, what are you doing New Year's Eve? You know, I mean, it's just it's fun. You know, it makes everybody kind of warm and we uh, uh, this time of the year spagatinis is, we call it snugsville you know? <laughs> i love that and it's nice and warm everybody's here for the holidays everybody's like, dressed nice and and it just has a great vibe and over the years we've worked here so much that we have a very loyal following and and um, we managed to sell out two nights in a row which uh, most acts don't do here two nights in a row so we're fortunate to have built a, a real true Fan base, and we call them true funk, true funk soldiers. True and, funk and that, soldiers, I that, love that. That kind of happened from the last, the first East Bay Soul album. There was a lyric in Survival of the Hippest, true funk soldiers. So that's that. Fast forward to 2.0 now. Um, it's really become the ensemble uh, project even more than the first one. And it's a real band. It's 10 pieces. Uh, five horns when Daryl Walker, our singer, is not singing. He also plays great tenor sax. Oh, yeah. So we have a 10 piece band and, and uh, we kind of laced the, the Christmas stuff in tonight and uh, we played here last night. So this is, uh, it's, it's going great. We just did another big shipment of uh, CDs, so we're ready to hit the 2013 with, with more product and it's moving well. We're doing very well at CD Baby and Amazon and iTunes and all the all the, the the new ways of doing it because I'm my, I'm the record company so I'm not on a major label so we do it the grassroots way it used to be really difficult to do that but right. now it's much easier to do that you know with all the technology that's at your fingertips now sure you know. well I'm so glad you brought up social media do you believe that now as an independent artist that social media has really bridged the divide between your audience and the record labels, and now you could kind of basically, as you said, you do everything in-house. Do so you feel like social media has really bridged the divide between you and your fans? Oh, absolutely. I mean, with, yeah, it, with the communications that everybody makes, I mean, we have really uh, built friendships oh, yes. with people that, you know, just would come to a show in the past, but now we, we can speak daily, twice, three times daily with a lot of people that um, they'll, they'll be here tonight. You know, sure, sure, uh, yeah. they were at Yoshi's in San Francisco. They, they'll they'll be back east in, in Annapolis or, or Boston. You know, it's like a network, and it really has brought it together. And especially the way we funded the last record, 2.0 through Kickstarter.com, that really, really showed the loyalty, uh, and, and it gives people something to grasp onto oh, and yeah. be involved with, and and kind of call their own. And we we appreciate so much being owned, <laughs> if, yeah, if that's not sure. the right word, but um, knowing the, 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 the allegiance of our, our fan base is so strong, it's really, it's, it's, it's a warm and fuzzy, and it really, it's inspiring, you know, and the band is a very inspirational group, I mean, it really digs its heels in and doesn't let go, and you'll see that tonight at the show, so 
Here well, we are. Speaking of the Kickstarter um, program, the thing I love about the Kickstarter program, and you mentioned that your project, your last project, East Bay Soul 2.0, was actually funded by that. Yeah. I think the thing that's awesome about that is that the fans can really feel as if they are a part. So when they hear the record, they will feel like, you know what, I was responsible for getting this sound out, uh -huh. you know, to the marketplace. And so they'll tell to friends, and they'll tell to friends, and it mm -hmm. kind of snowballs. It's that's exactly <laughs> it. It's so true. And, you know, it, the, the Kickstarter thing is almost like PBS or NPR in the fundraising yeah. levels. That And uh, the higher you go, the larger the, your, your pledge or your, your contribution, the bigger the, 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 the prize or the, the gift that you are, are getting back for contributing. And uh, we went from $5 to $5,000, you know, so, and everything in between. I mean, it was for, to the CD, the autograph CD, to trumpet lessons from me. For me or Daryl, playing or singing "Happy Birthday" on a special occasion to anybody you wanted it done, I, I, I recorded a couple of uh, voicemail recordings, you know, to say hi. Oh. Uh, this is Greg Adams, and uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, Joe is not here right now, but after the beat, please please leave a message. I did a few of those, and uh, so and then we went up all the way to five thousand dollars for executive producer, and uh, my good friend Paul Schaefer is one of those executive producers. He. He, he, yeah, show. it was great, you know, so uh, the sky's the limit. I mean, if you go to kickstarter.com, you, you will be amazed at some of the amounts of money people have earned. There's one girl singer, and I use the, the word hesitantly when I say singer. She raised over a million dollars. Oh, my goodness. So it's, you know, you, it can be done. It's all marketing, you know, and she was very, very clever about it. And it, it's it's an amazing thing. So we're we're, you know thinking about doing it again you know well I'm so glad you brought the Kickstarter because we've been thinking about Kickstarter for a while and we'll get a little bit more into our gifted music foundation well as a matter of fact we can just go ahead and talk about that now um, Coffee Talk Jazz Television started a program called the Ed B. Bass Gifted Music Foundation for Children mm -hmm. and I'm so proud of what we have um, accomplished and I think the Kickstarter would be a great way to get some funds you know to our kids and let me ask you um, as part of the music community how do you think that we can keep the beat of music alive in schools for our children? Well, you know that's a big thing for me because I'm a pub I'm a I'm a product of the public school system as far as music goes, so I had a great experience. And uh, but that was a long time ago. And with the way the economy has ended up, it, there's so few school bands now. Yeah. And arts art departments, fine art departments have shut down. And you know, it always amused me. Not amused me disgusted me when you know sure. the football team gets new uniforms every year but you know the marching band is in 25 year old uniforms right and, so and if, if there is a marching band left or a right. concert band or a jazz band and so it's very important and anything that I can do and I do often I try to help by doing clinics um, going oh, a couple of days before we'll do a, a show in a city I'll try to do a clinic at the local high school or local junior college or even a middle school. Try to draw out of the kids some kind of an inspiration oh, that, yes. that'll, that'll, you know, give them a little bit of a, a, a drive to, to, to continue to, you know, you know, it's a tough, it's, it's a language that we speak. Yes, and it is. The better you speak the language, the better you can communicate, but you oh, have to have the instruction and, and, the, and the whole environment to learn the language. You know, whatever it's just like Spanish, French, music, Japanese, Chinese music. They're all, you know, and ja music is a conversation between two people or 94 people in a symphonic orchestra. And jazz is the ultimate ad lib conversation. It's just a conversation between two people or three or four. So it's like you know, and you talk back and forth to each other. <laughs> I gotta tell you, I am so. watching you, and your face has taken on a glow when you're talking about music. <laughs> And you're talking about the language, and I know that you're so impassioned about it. Um, I just want to touch on the Gifted Music Foundation just for another few moments. We are really excited that we have partnered with the Beyond the Bell Stay Late Graduate Program. Um, I had a meeting, it's probably about three or four, uh, three or four weeks back, and so we've actually partnered with LAUSD. We met with the Board of Supervisors. We met That's with great. the Regions, and so we went in there and. I won't say we bullnosed them, but by the time we were done with the presentation, we left their mouths open 
we pitched the idea of why we wanted to come in, what we were going to do as part of the music community to keep the beat of music alive in schools. I'll keep you abreast of what's going on because we are going to have guest lecturers. We have right now we have 20 artists that have signed on, which I'm really excited about. Oh, we have 20 in. art. Thank you so yeah, much. Oh my sure. god. You oh my god. Yeah. Don't make me cry right now. No, no, I, I'm, I'm there. <laughs> Um, we're so excited about this Gifted Music Foundation partnering with the Beyond the Bell, and so we're bringing in the guest lecturers. Uh, we're going to be in, in the inner city schools, we're going to be um, out in the Hollywood area, some of the performing arts schools. Mm -hmm. So we actually have a planning meeting when we go back in January to identify great. those targeted, for those targeted schools, so I'm excited about that. But I want to ask you, what's your favorite Christmas memory or family moment? Oh man, I, you know, <laughs> I, you know it, it depends, you know, from getting my first train set as a little oh. boy and then have my older brother take it over and I never got to play with it because he was so fascinated with the to you know um, to being home for Christmas as opposed to being on the road uh, that's always a joy um, you know it's that time of year when you can just can, can kind of uh, reconnect with family and friends and stuff like that and uh, I like I, we played at Yoshi's last week and I got to see my brother and his son and his oh. girlfriend which we never seem to get to do. We never have the time to get together. And, and this time, this year, we won't be able to get together for Christmas. So that was our little Christmas. And then everybody's uh, birthday kind of happens in January and February. Okay. And we, we always, we're trying to get together in that time period. They come sure. down here and we go up there. Well, last year we didn't get get it till May, you know, so <laughs> we're so busy, you know. And I so, know, but you but, guys slid it in there. Yeah, we we did get it done, but... You know, Christmas is, is a great time of year. I mean, I, I know it's a tough time for, for many people. Sure. And I think that uh, the troops, especially being overseas yeah. in the fighting zone and all that, you know, or even in a base somewhere, not in the war zone, but away from family, you know. Some of the folks that are on reserve, I mean, still. Sure. I mean, so, you know, it's amazing. Uh, uh, we took a song that was sub submitted by a, a fan who, who gave on Kickstarter... His name is George Grund, and he wrote a, a, an instrumental, and it was so, I mean, I don't solicit, solicit material, but we did have a spot left for the, for the album, a tenth spot, and uh, it was a beautiful piece of music. So Andrea, my wife and I, we wrote a lyric, and it's called I'm Coming Home, and it, it's about a GI who's coming home and mm -hmm. talking about when he left, you know, he, he can, he's over there, he can see where she's standing in, in the kitchen, and and he knows how she hurts and he's and how the kids have grown and I'm coming home and it really it, it works big time so I you know that that's something that's dear to my heart as far as like yeah how can you not you know get a soft spot in your heart when you see the father walk into the classroom oh, yes. and greet his his kid and, and totally surprise the kid <laughs> you know, not see that coming you know so you that know that is really special yeah now I want to ask you this What's the best thing about your life right now? Um, well, the, one of the best things is the fact that I've been married for 33 years. Congratulations. And thank you. And we just celebrated that on November 17th. And my wife, Andrea, is the love of my life. And um, so I would have to say, number one, that's the most important thing. Or everything, anything I have, it, it doesn't doesn't it doesn't come close to, to what that is so sure. it doesn't matter about the big fancy cars or the fancy house or the, the fancy clothes it's about what you have that you really is real in your life tangible yeah and so that is the, the height of my my everything you know I mean I've had, had a lot of accolades in my career and stuff sure. like that but you know at the end of the day it's who you're with you know and who you can share family. it with you yeah. know so that that's to me, that's the most important thing. Well, the last question that I have for you is, you've been a seminal figure in the music world for 40 years under your belt. What's one bit of advice, I know it's like you're taking your breath, it's like, what's one bit of advice that you give to a musician or a songwriter who is thinking about getting into the music business? Just one bit of advice. Don't smoke. And I mean that. I smoked for many years, and I pay for it daily and so I the health and that's one of the most important things about being a performer in any area it's you gotta have your health number oh, absolutely. one and you have to have strength mentally and physically 
to say no to the, the temptations that are out there, which are many. They are around every corner waiting for you to pounce on you. And mm. I mean, I'm literally, it's, I speak in metaphors, but it's really true. There's, Keeping it real. Yeah, and you know, one thing is, is funny is when you start to get some success and you start to climb that ladder, be nice to everybody on the way mm -hmm. up because you're going to be coming down that ladder again. It's inevitable. Be humble. Because you're going to meet those people again. <laughs> and they, they might not have a, a big opinion, you know, of you. And, and you know, you may need them. And they, they might remember that, hey, you know, he wasn't so nice on the way up, you know. And I've worked with so many people who didn't do that. And the few that I have, they're really not they're very well liked, you know. And, and I'm not going to mention names. I would never do that. <laughs> but I have, a, I have some very good friends who kept it real, you know. And you, once you do that, you're, you're okay. You know, it's being in the right place at the right time. It can be talent, but you have to have the savvy to know how to make it work. Oh, absolutely. Well, Greg, I want to say, um, on behalf of all the music fans around the globe, your dedication <laughs> and your standard of excellence um, is something to be followed. So I want to thank, thank you. you so much for chatting with me here on Thanks, Coffee Talk Jazz Television. Thank you, Bridget. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. With music in our hearts and jazz in our souls, we want to thank you, our friends, fans, and supporters, for watching Coffee Talk Jazz Television and making us number one. I have been your host, Miss Bridget Lewis. Merry Christmas.